Our next panelist, Matthew Asner, is the Director of Corporate Development at Autism Speaks, an autism advocacy organization in the United States that sponsors autism research and conducts awareness and outreach activities aimed at families, governments, and the public. In 2008, Asner's world was changed forever when his youngest son, Will, was diagnosed with autism. He was familiar with autism, having a brother who was on the spectrum. In 2012, he left his successful film career and joined Autism Speaks. Since then, he has dedicated himself to the millions of people affected by autism and related disorders in the world. Asner resides in Los Angeles, California, and is married to Nava Paskowitz Asner. They have six children between them, including three on the autism spectrum. Mr. Asner. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Good. Yeah, I was a little worried because I thought my book was going to fall asleep. But it woke up right before I got up. Uh, so, the speakers so far have talked about ability. And um, that's so important because we have to look at this through the eyes of the um, Most people look at this as a disability. Uh, and that's the biggest problem we face as parents, as individuals on the spectrum. We face that problem of calling it a disability, um, of the reality of someone in, in a room that you're interviewing sitting down at an interview with someone, uh, thinking that you have a disability. Um, at, at Autism Speaks, we have, we have uh, think tanks uh, and, and town hall meetings. One of them was about when uh, it was at UCLA about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Uh, we had about seven or eight corporations that uh, were hiring people on the spectrum, that were making it a habit of hiring people. Uh, and all of them spoke very highly about the program that they had. Uh, and they talked about people on the spectrum and about hiring them, and about how they were as employees. And what do you think they said? They said, each one of them overwhelmingly said positive things. They said, they're always on time, they're honest. Uh, they uh, always do what I, what I tell them, and, and they're dedicated professionals. So that made me think, you know, uh, I did a show recently, um, and Alex was, uh, was a guest on that show, about a point, I have a show called On the Spectrum, and we did the show about employment. Uh, I had a guest on who was actually, ironically, a member of the Visual Fix Group. And he, um, he first, first uh, before I get to that story, I want to say that what, what you event and Conceptual Minds does is miraculous, incredible. And uh, she should be applauded. Because um, one of the things I'm going to talk about is self confidence. But what she provides to these young individuals uh, is self confidence. And both my father and I are big believers in exceptional minds, and I want to just say thank you for doing such a great And and also to CIP, which, which trains an individual to go into a workplace and go into interview situations and really, you know, learn how to do that. So I spoke with this young man who I went to high school with actually, who was on the spectrum, and um, he was having a lot of trouble getting hired as a visual effects person. Uh, he just could not get hired. Um, he's a large man. He has a lot of hair on his face, kind of like me, but uh, a little bushier. Uh, and he he just he, he, he had problems in interview situations. And interestingly, in one interview, he sat down with, uh, with a prospective employer and told them, interview was going great, his portfolio was on the table, they were into it, they thought it was amazing. Um, and then he said, um, well, I have Asperger's. And he could visibly see the employer's face change from 
somebody who wanted to hire him to someone who didn't. And I thought about that, and, and I thought, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, but what we're dealing with here is the unknown. What I think really we need to do as a society is make a huge paradigm shift. So there's three things that I think we need to do. First, we've got to start in school. And we've got to stop trying to fit square pegs into round holes. And you know, each kid, and I'm not just talking about kids who are on the spectrum or have ADD or have a learning disability. They're all individuals. We're all individuals. And we place way too much emphasis on test scores and, and, and trying to get things uh, you know, standardized. We have to look at individuals. You know, we, we've thrown out music, we've thrown out shop, we've thrown out anything that, that talent can really kind of center on. And, and we've got to rethink that. And, you know, I applaud, uh, uh, I, I never want to get political, but I applaud the Obama administration because they finally have come out and said, you know what, we think we made a mistake. And I think, uh, it was in the New York Times about a week and a half ago, we made a mistake that we need to rethink test scores. And I think that's one of the greatest things I've heard from how to do we do need to rethink test scores. We need to look at individuals and direct them in life. Parents, uh, that's the second one. Now, a teacher is someone that a kid sees probably more than his parents during the, his career in school. And it's imperative that a teacher can work with a child and develop that child into the individual that he will be as an adult. Um, parents. When my son was diagnosed with autism, I have three kids on the spectrum. Uh, when my youngest son was diagnosed uh, uh, with autism, my oldest son, um, I was really, I, I didn't know what to think. I, I, um, I had a lot of dreams for him, and, uh, and I had to come to the realization that my dreams for my child uh, were probably not going to come true. They were, they were going to be history. So I had to make that shift, and, and I think the most important thing for a parent to go through is that shift, because at a very young age, we have to start looking for things that they can be good at, that we can tailor them to, that, that, that we can push them into, things that they want to do, like visual effects, like uh, singing, music, anything that gives them self-confidence, because, you know, you were talking, Judy, about doubt, about uh, low self-esteem. That is one of the biggest battles. And it's our job as parents to make sure that they are filled with self-esteem. Because they have ability. They have incredible And we need to make sure that they understand where to find them and where to get the tools to, to unleash them. Because it's there. Um, the third is the employer. And I'm sorry, there's four. The third is the employer. We need to make people understand. This is through awareness. And a lot of people say, oh, there's too much awareness. There's too much awareness. I don't think so. Because we need to let people understand. We need people to hear success stories. We need the seven corporations that, that, uh, that spoke at this, uh, at this town hall. We need to, to make sure that people understand that, that you know, when, they, when they look at someone on the spectrum, when they look at someone with a learning disability, when they look at someone with ADD, it doesn't matter. That, that they are model employees. They can be model employees. They can be the best employees they've ever hired. We need to make sure that people hear success stories so that they can understand that when they're sitting across from someone with Asperger's and they say, well, I have Asperger's, but they don't go blank and think, well, you can't work here. We need to make people understand that that's a gift. It's not a disability. It's a gift. And, and we need to be really vocal about people, success stories. We need to be very vocal. Now here's the most difficult part. Legislators, pol politicians. We need to make sure that politicians help us in this task because it's not easy to convince people. It's not easy to make people understand that hiring someone on the spectrum could be a good thing because people are afraid of the unknown. And if they don't know what they're doing, they don't understand it then they're going to be nervous. They're going to be afraid. So we need to somehow find a way to incentivize this. Um, and, and someone needs to answer the phone.
Um, but we need to figure that out. Um, and, that, and that we can do through advocacy, through awareness. And we need to make sure that our politicians understand that this is an important issue. 500,000 kids are going to be coming into you know, transition age over the next 10 years. 500,000. That's a lot of people who are going to need help. Who are going to need help finding jobs. I, uh, I have a brother who's 29 years old. He has a college degree. He's having a lot of trouble finding work. And it's not because he's not smart. It's not because he doesn't know how to, how, how to do things. It's because he, he has a very difficult time in social situations. He has a very difficult time turning his edit switch on. I think you were talking about a lot of that. And, and it's hard. And people don't understand when you're sitting across from them in an interview situation that that exists. I, I was interviewing someone in my office for a position uh, at Autism Speed who was on the spectrum. And he uh, was amazing to me. Um, and he, he was very impressive. And he told me halfway through the interview, he said, well, you know, I couldn't get myself out of a bathtub when I was 14 years old. Um, I was he just graduated Davis and was on his way to USC to go to grad school. And I was very impressed by him. And he said to me, halfway through the interview, oh, you know, I know, I know your brother. Uh, I went to school with your brother. And I said, wow, you. Really? That's amazing. Uh, and it really made me think. And I said, well, um, what did you think of my brother? And he said, well, I thought he was one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. And, and I was looking at this kid across from me, and I thought, wow, you know, uh, you have everything. You, 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 your parents have done the right thing. They made the right choices. They, they pushed you in the right directions. Uh, you've had incredible training, because he's sitting there across from me, and he was amazing at what he was doing. So this kind of stuff is everything. It's everything. So, um, I applaud the work CIP does uh, getting getting people trained because uh, it's it's important, but it's not everything. We need to shift as a society, and we need to make sure that people understand that this is an important thing, uh, and and uh, and we need to take steps to make sure that we incentivize them. So that's three, four, four things I mentioned. That's schools not fitting round pegs into square holes. That's one. Celebrating self-confidence. Promoting self-confidence. Two, parents. Looking for that. Looking for that, that, that hole that fits that kid. Letting that kid guide the parent as to where to guide them. Whether it's dance or music or <coughs> visual effects, art, uh, shop, mechanics. You know, looking for that thing that uh, that rings their bell. You know, Temple Brandon would have been in a lot of trouble if she hadn't had that self-discovery moment. Uh, it would have been, and, and she had an incredible mother. But you know, it was a, it was a, a, it was an incredible stroke of luck for her, um, and she changed she changed an entire industry. Um, three schools. Uh, sorry, three not schools. Employers, we need to make the paradigm shift there. We need to make sure they understand that these are incredible employees. Uh, they, they, they work hard. We need success stories. We need to promote success stories. And for legislators, politicians, we need to make sure that they understand how important it is that we incentivize, incentivize this and make it the important issue that it is. And I just want to close with, with uh, something that Autism Speaks is doing right now. Uh, we have a website that we partnered on called thespectrumcareers.com, which uh, is like a monster.com website, thespectrumcareers.com, and uh, it's free for the public. Uh, and uh, people like uh, companies like TJ Maxx um, are listing jobs on uh, on that portal, like Microsoft, uh, and um, it's going to be growing over the next uh, 10 years. Uh, and hopefully, um, the individuals here with autism or Asperger's. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at that site, uh, and it's a very useful site. I hope uh, we'll take a look at it. But I want to thank you for letting me speak, and uh, 
look forward to hearing what everyone else has to say. Thank you very much.